Hello, guys. Welcome to Minecraft. A story of a man trapped in a box. Not really. So, hey, it's Tuesday, right? Tuesday? Tuesday. It sounds weird when I say it. Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday, guys. Um, so it's Tuesday. And I'm a week behind here on this whole torching thing. So... I don't know what to do about that. I think what we're going to do is we're going to have a band of terribleness. Because I'm not going to reach all the way over there. Um, I'm just going to torch like I normally would back and forth here. And uh, there's going to be a band of, of death that you have to cross over to get back into the light. It's like, it's really a metaphor for life. Um, so, I missed two weeks of Torch Tuesday. Like, you would think, like, this is the only damn thing you do on the server. You could at least do that, right? Well... The answer is apparently not, <laughs> because as I've shown, I'm not capable of actually just doing that. Oh god, this is terrible. I'm wasting things. Shit. Okay, let's stop breaking things here, because I'm just going to waste them. Um, so, I the reason why that there was uh, a delay is because of PAX. I was gone to Boston, to Seattle. <laughs> to Boston, Seattle. Um, <laughs> that's where Pax East is at, by the way. It's Boston. Hey, look, somebody put some torches over here. Good job, guy. Um, so I want to, that's what I'm going to do this week. I'm going to talk about Pax. And, uh, I got back on a Wednesday and I kind of wanted to do a torch Thursday, but I was really fucking tired. So I didn't. So I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. So Pax was good as always. This was probably one of my most favorite Paxes. And I think it's because I was like a really bad YouTuber at this Pax. I, uh, I didn't. I didn't spend a lot of time at the convention, uh, and I had. So, and the time I did spend was spent like so efficiently that it just. It was just good, good, good convention, man. It's always good to get to see your friends, especially when you're someone like me that doesn't have any real life friends anymore because they all live so far away. Um, the people I have become friends with um, are these YouTubers that I know. So I only really get to hang out with my friends when I'm at a convention these days. Um, in fact, my best friend, Mad Cow, recently moved. He was the only friend I had anymore that was within, like, driving range. And the motherfucker moved to San Francisco um, for a job. So I, I'm i the loneliest, saddest man in the world. I don't have any, and, and I also don't have any arrows. Um, mm, chicken... Oh, yes! Look at that! I got both chickens off! It's a world record, guys. You just witnessed it. Call up Guinness. Let him know. I did it. It was me. Ah, uh, so. Um, let's begin the story of, of a man's journey to, to Seattle. Um, first off, I had first class tickets to Seattle. Yay! Uh, the reason why I bought first class tickets is because I always check. Like, when, I book in my, when I'm booking my plane ticket, um... I see how much the coach ticket's going to cost, first off, obviously, and then I go see what the first class ticket's going to cost, and generally, the price is way too high, and I'm like, okay, no, not, not going to happen. For example, when I went to Boston for PAX East, when I bought my ticket, my round trip ticket, this is the cheapest ticket I've ever had in my life, was 79 bucks, 79 bucks round trip to PAX East, um, and the first class ticket was $1,200, <laughs> and so I was like, okay, well, flying coach, no questions asked there. Um, and generally, like for instance, with my Seattle ticket, it was like two hundred dollars more, which, which is you know that's that's not like nothing to like just you know laugh at or anything. But here's the thing, um, that, that evil evil woman, why did you do that to me? And look at what she dropped—a whole pile of them. That's just a troll, witchy troll lady. Um, whole pile of them, man. Um, so hey, it's MC Gamer. Hey! Uh, man, the poison is real. Um, so uh, a bag, and you're taking a like a check bag on a flight. Uh, with Delta, it's fifty bucks. I always fly Delta, by the way, not because they're paying me to say that, but because I just I I 
I don't really know why. Their hub's in Atlanta, so I can't even say it's because of the hub. I just like always had good experiences with Delta, and so I decided that if I was going to be flying a lot, I should pick one so that I can like um, have consistent sky miles. <laughs> He's not right here. I can't see you. Um, <laughs> so that's why I fly Delta. It's just because of the Sky Mouse thing. I have a Delta uh, American Express card and all that other bullshit, too. Which, is, you know, works out for me. Um, I just hit silver status. Oh, boy, silver status. Actually, that's not true. I'm 469 miles away from silver status. But I should hit silver status by the end of the year. I actually went and talked to him in the, uh, the Sky Club uh, on my way back because I was just sitting around Atlanta with, like, three hours to kill. And just to see if there was, like, some way we could work something out where they could just, like, let me be silver. And the answer was no. Oh, well, well you're a fast little guy. Um, man, he's so quick. <laughs> um, okay, none of this has anything to do with anything. But yes, I did have, I, just to explain why, I ended up having three bags, because I knew that, uh, uh I, I knew that we'd have to bring back all those shirts if we didn't sell them all, and I didn't think we'd sell them all. Um, so it was basically well well worth the cost because I was going to end up spending 150 bucks on just baggage anyways. Um, and so basically it was only like 50 bucks more when you look at it like that. And first class is actually really nice. And just to let you guys know. <laughs> I, I've only flown first class like... I think this is the third time. And it is... It's such a nicer playing experience I'll, I'll just have you guys know it just really is um like the food is actually decent like it's just just a nicer playing experience that's all um i don't i don't want these i, I want to be done with these forever done with you always forever um <laughs> so first day of packs we didn't really do a lot uh i got there pretty early i guess it was like one or two o'clock that's not really that early um but, yeah, got there about 1 or 2 o'clock, and had to go check into the house, so we did that. We rented a Airbnb house, and it didn't turn out as good this time as our previous experience with houses. I really need arrows. Um, we had a really good experience with our house in Boston, and this house, not so much. Um, I guess I can talk about that more as we go here. Man, look at all these mobs. Just look at them. Just look at them all. Just look at him die. I'm on fire. Why am I on fire? Oh, you're you're a flaming fucking fuck. Um, I hate skeletons. They just they're the worst. Really, they really are the worst. You're literally the worst. You're the worst. I say. Jeez, the mobs, man. I need to eat. I need to eat. Listen here. I had just about enough of that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we didn't do a lot. Chad, we tried to pick out somewhere to eat. And we were having the worst time doing that. Chad ends up picking out a place for us. And he says we're going to a Mexican restaurant. It didn't, it wasn't Mexican. It wasn't even like close to Mexican. It ended up being an Italian place. And it ended up being amazingly good. Um, and that's basically all we did on the first day. And we just kind of hung out, drank a little, chatted, you know. Um, got some sleep for, for PAX the next day. Um, oh man, that guy's bow's right there. It's a flame bow, too. I kind of want to combine it with my bow, but I don't want to... I guess i get rid of this dirt. Let's at least see how, like, damaged it is. It's really damaged. I don't... I kind of want the dirt back. Oh god. Um, go away. Uh, so the first day of PAX... Wes and I had to go pick up our shirts that we had ordered, so we didn't get to PAX until super late. Um, it was like 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That spider's got strength. He's a strengthy spider. I'm just going to avoid half of you bastards. Ah, uh, skeleton. Listen here, you son of a bitch. That's what I had to say about that. Oh, God, these skeletons. I want your arrows. Give them to me. Um... So yeah, we got there about five or so. Um, didn't really do a lot. Just kind of chatted with people. Met met a, met a handful of people. Signed a little bit of stuff at the Twitch booth. Um, and then we left for the day, pretty much. It was a very uneventful day. Um, 
I ended up leaving early. There was a there was a Twitch panel that was gonna happen. Oh my god! Oh my god! Just oh my god! This is like space chickens all over again. Holy shit, man! Oh my god! I can't! I can't even! Look at all these! They're all skeletons! Like this is fucking obnoxious! Just look at them! Okay, hold on. You guys just gotta fuck right off. I gotta go over here and heal, man. And think about I had ten arrows. Bring it on, you best bastards. Um. So most of the guys were gonna go to this Twitch channel, and like I said, I didn't really care about it because I don't I don't stream on Twitch. My internet's not good enough for that. Um. And so I didn't go. I ended up going back to our house. Uh kind of laid down the bed, talked to my daughter some. My daughter is getting worse and worse with this whole convention stuff. Um, like, significantly... I'm gonna shoot you right in the face! Okay. Feel better now. I feel good about that. Feel me good. Let me feel good. Um, I'm just gonna run. Just run. Fucking hell, dude. It's like a war zone out here. Um... Bring it on. Just bring it. Bring it, you motherfuckers. Bring it! They're probably blowing up all my torches. Um. See, so yeah, I didn't go to the I didn't go to the Twitch panel. Didn't did not go. Didn't care. Um. And maybe maybe someday I'll be able to stream. Um, but today is not that day. So when that day comes, I will care more. How does my armor even look? Like if I get hit by another fucking arrow, I'm gonna lose my goddamn mind. Fuck off! All of you, eat a dick! The biggest one you can find! Choke on it! A little bit angry right now. Like, seriously? These fucking mobs, man? They're just out of control. It's out of control, I tell you. Somebody needs to... It's because I've been gone for two weeks. I can't... There's just not enough torching happening. I'm the savior the server needs! Look at this! It's pandemonium, man! I can't! I can't! I can't! I gotta eat! I ain't got time for your shit! Clicking. Ah! Okay. Feeling good. Feeling better now. Good and relaxed. Nice and relaxed. Huh. <sighs> Feels good, doesn't it? Just, just breathe a little. Just breathe. Just keep breathing. Um, I'm gonna run out a damn sword, man. By the time this is all said and done, I'm gonna have plenty of gunpowder, though. That makes me happy. I like, I like gunpowder. It makes me really happy. Um, yeah. <laughs> So when I left the convention center, uh, I took an Uber, and we drove by one of the uh, marijuana dispensaries in Seattle. For those that don't know, marijuana is legal in Seattle. Um, but there's only one place, I guess, that, that sells it now or something. Um, but uh, the, uh, the, the line was, like, around the building. And my cab driver was telling me it's like a five-hour wait to even get in. So I imagine, <laughs> I decided that most people just don't even go the legal route. They're just like, whatever, fuck, I'm not standing in line that long. <laughs> uh, who knows? Look at these little fucks! Oh god, it's just overwhelming, the number of mobs that come out of the woodwork today. I've never seen anything like it, man. We need we need a we need the hero that I am when I'm not here. I'm a hero, I tell you guys, a hero. Those are metals, metals that are made out of torches. 
And for those that missed our PAX panel, these are crafted. These are handcrafted in a workbench. There's nothing else like them on the server. Handcrafted, I tell you. You guys always notice that the, the place that says handcrafted the most are always sandwich shops. Like, how else did you fucking make those sandwiches? I'm, I'm assuming they're not feet crafted. You didn't use your tongue, did you? Well, of course they're fucking handcrafted. Just find that to be an offensive use of the word handcrafted. Um, I mean, because, I mean, legitimate people like me like to use it for things like torch making. So, like, I get really offended when it's misused. You know, you guys understand, right? Um, okay. Tangent over. Uh, yes. Packs, 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 packs. So, first day, that's pretty much it. We ate at Crab Pot that night. It was delicious. You guys got to see pictures of that. That's the place where they dump all the crab around the table and everybody goes to town. It's great. Love it. It's something that you don't really see on the East Coast very much unless it's with blue crab. Um, and, yeah. So, I look forward to going there. We went there last year. I look forward to going there again this year. Um, and we did, and I was happy. Um... And they serve these Long Island iced teas that are really delicious there in these big crafts. So, yeah. I just like that place. It's a good place. I like it a lot. Um, so that was that. Went home after that. Went to sleep. Uh, next day was Saturday. Um, and I didn't really do a lot on Saturday either. I had a meeting to play uh, Borderlands with 2K. And that was at 2.30. So I arrived at like 2.15. Um, we were supposed to play it the day before, but it ended up happening. Um, so yeah, I get there at 2.15. Oh, no, wait, no, wait. We were supposed to play it this day, and this didn't end up happening. Um, they ended up having to postpone it because they were having some technical di issues. Uh, then I had a meeting with Broadband regarding our YouTube network that were 99.99999% done. Um, I actually have a meeting with my lawyer tomorrow to finalize the contract. So, should be after tomorrow, you, uh, Minecraft has its own uh, MCN with YouTube, which will be fucking great for everyone in Minecraft. Um, and then someday, even for you guys um, that are just regular YouTubers, once once we're comfortable with, with the, our, our own set of goals and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, me and Wes met with them um, and took care of our business regarding that stuff. And uh, then I went back to the house. I was done. I was done for the day. Didn't go back to the convention or anything. Um, let's see here. That was pretty much Saturday. I didn't. I don't think I did anything else Saturday. <laughs> Saturday was uh, was good. I think I actually mixed up the days. So I think this is the day that I had a headache and talked to my daughter with a headache in the bed. Um, and then Sunday was fan service day, which is. Everything and everyone got to meet Minecraft. Um, so we uh, we got there, ate brunch at uh, this place we ate the year before. I don't remember what it's called now, but it was it was good then. It was good again this year. Me and Paws both had poutine actually. Um, I haven't been over here. Oh yeah, they built the silo I was talking about. Sweet, sweet. Um, Ari said they were going to build the silo, her uh, pack rat, and the gyms. So I'm excited to see it. Oh man, the top of the is that a mushroom? Was the top supposed to look like that? The top was not supposed to look like that. <laughs> it keeps getting struck by lightning. Maybe someone pranked it. <laughs> it's kind of silly. It looks like uh, like Little Miss Muffet. I read a lot of kids' books these days. Um, <laughs> oh, God. I just, like, died. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Sunday, we, we, did, we, ate, we ate lunch. Then we went over... To the transit station where we had a, a meetup with all our fans. We had about a hundred or so people show up there. We sold t-shirts. It's the first time we've ever sold merchandise in a public place. And I was just like, okay, so we had a discussion in our house about the price of these t-shirts. And I, as I had told you guys before we went, my goal with this all was to lower our cost and to lower our price so that you more, more of you guys can buy t-shirts. Um, and so <clears throat> my push was for a $15 shirt. Which lowers our profit margins, but it's still, we're still making a profit, right? And to me, that's that's what matters. Um, but uh, as Sevidus put pointed out, pretty much everything it packs is twenty bucks. We should sell for twenty bucks, and so we argued about that for three hours. <laughs> that's this is how Minecraft works, um, and we finally agreed on fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> uh, so the thing is, though, the ones that didn't sell. Um, those will probably be sold for more because I have to ship them now. Um, but uh, the goal is, I just got out of our our weekly mini-meeting. <laughs> every every Monday night we have a little mini-meeting that's just me and Wes and Chad. 
Um, and uh, so we just did that, just like literally t 10 minutes ago. And uh, we talked about the Minecraft website, because we were supposed to have that completely done a while back. And we got busy with other stuff, and it never got finished. Like, basically, that was one of Wes's primary jobs whenever he got, whenever he joined the Minecraft group as, um, as our project manager was to deal with stuff like our website and then he got pretty much tied up with play minecraft and hasn't done anything since but now that we've got a whole new team in place and play minecraft and wes's job has been taken over by omont wes is going is moving back to do all the stuff that uh that he was supposed to do originally um which is good so stuff like our website and our social media all that type of stuff that we want to do will be getting better updates um so yeah uh Hopefully there'll be a store on our site pretty soon where you guys can buy shirts without having to go through Spreadshirt. Um, and hopefully we can give them to you cheaper than what we've been doing, basically. Um, so yeah. So yeah, we did that. We did the we did the fan meetup. It was really good. Had a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> this guy that was there last year, he's a younger guy. I would guess he's probably 15, maybe, maybe even younger. Um, he brought that damn picture from Gary's Mod. The spray where somebody takes the meme of the guy getting puked on and adds my head to it or a guy puking on himself and added my head to it and I swore I told everyone I warned everyone that if anyone ever brings that to me in a convention I'm gonna punch him in the face thing is he was a minor so I just lightly punched him in the face <laughs> I asked his permission if I could punch him in the face and he gave me permission to punch him in the face and so I <laughs> the thing is even after he gave me permission I think he thought I was gonna just punch him <laughs> Because, like, you know, I, I come in with my fist, and he's, like, flinching all hard. And I just tap him, you know. Um, <laughs> like, I didn't even punch him. I just, my my fist touched his face <laughs> with his permission. And Brian, Logan 111, actually recorded it. So somewhere there's video of this happening. Um, so, yeah, that all went good. Signed a bunch of stuff. We have new poster cards um, from, uh, from you guys. You guys remember we have poster cards. We had an agreement, you fucking assholes! There was an agreement that that would not exist in this world. The people who do that, whoever they are, you guys know who they are. Who are they? Let's burn them. Burn them at the stake. That's all I gotta say. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah. So then after that, we left there and went to the Twitch booth where we had two hours of signing, I believe it was. And during this, so we're standing there, we're working out logistics in the back in the back of the Twitch booth, and one of their executives, I'm standing behind her, and she goes to point behind her, trying to like give these guys directions as far as where they're going to go next. And she stabs me in the eye with these long ass fucking na nails that she's got on. These like press on nails. I feel her pinky go under my eyelid and scrape my eyeball. Was the most painful thing. I got an instant headache. And I'm just standing there like, and Jeff's like, well, you know, your eyeball could have exploded at least. <laughs> I'm like, well, well, fuck, I'm, I guess that's the thing that didn't happen at least. And the thing is, Chad has got this huge aversion to like eyeballs. Like he's got this like an eyeball phobia. And so Chad's freaking the fuck out. Like, he can't even be a part of the conversation. <laughs> and, like, I don't know. I was freaking out, like, because my cousin got hit in the eye one time uh, with a football and his retina detached. And it was, like, this $8,000 surgery. And so I'm like, should I be getting her information? Is this, like, the same as, like, when you have a car accident? Should I, like, get her information in the event I need to have, like, a $10,000 surgery or something so that, like, I know who to contact as far as who stabbed me in the fucking eye? <laughs> <laughs> but luckily I'm fine. My retina didn't detach and my eyeball didn't explode or anything like that. But man, it hurt. It ruined my day. I went from like happy guy to, well, this fucking sucks. I want to go home now. I got a headache. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, anyways, we did, we did that, uh, the Twitch signing. And then we had our panel right after that. And, man, what a day. And then after that, Broadband offered to take us out to dinner. Um, and so we went to this place called Blue Anchor. And that's where you guys have seen that picture of me and Seth eating the biggest fucking lobster you've ever seen in your life. And so here's my thing. When someone tells me they're going to take me out to dinner, it stresses me out to no end. Because 
I'm kind of a guy that likes to eat good food, especially, uh, I mean, when I'm at home, you know, we just cook at home. We just eat, we just cook, and we eat, I mean, we, we, eat, we eat well, you know, we eat good food, um, but we, we cook it ourselves, and we don't really eat out a lot. I mean, we eat out some, but not a lot. It's very rare. Um, when I'm going to a convention, I want to eat out, and I want to eat out food that's good, and it's local, and um, yeah, that's like the only thing that comes close to a vacation part of conventions is when I eat out. Um, and I have no problem paying for my own food. I prefer it, actually, especially after this experience uh, at this PAX because it stresses me out to no end when someone else is paying for my food because now I'm no longer going to order what I want. I'm going to order, like, the cheapest thing on the menu, and then I'm not going to be satisfied. This is, like, the biggest first world problem you guys have ever heard in your life, but this is this is one I have, okay? I'm just I'm sharing it with you. I want out of here. This is my life, and I don't want it to be. Okay, give me up. Give me up. There we go. Um, so... I'd order scallops actually, because there's I rarely get good scallops on the East Coast, and then they come back and they were out of scallops. Um, so I was like, okay, what do you suggest? She's like, well, the lobster's good, and I was like, well, fuck, I can bet it is. Um, <laughs> and so she's like, all right, I was like, all right, I'll take the lobster. And then she's like, what size? And I was like, I don't know, just give me a big one. <laughs> she's like, well, they're like one pound, two pound, three pounds. Like, yeah, that sounds good. Um, <laughs> so I just, I just went with it, man. I just went with it. And so that giant ass lobster, that's what Seth did too. He was like, yep, bring me one of those too. Um, so we did it and that was paid for by broadband. <laughs> Thank you, broadband. Um, and I'll talk about this a little bit more because then the next night my food was bought for me by Amazon and, and I stressed out about that too. The thing is, I didn't know they were buying it when I ordered, so I, I don't feel, well, okay, Ori kind of hinted at it, and so I kind of thought it might happen, but then I was hoping it wouldn't, and so I just I just ordered like I would normally order, and the sushi place we went to, you guys have probably seen pictures of that too, and that that was way more food than any of us anticipated getting, like, we asked him how big the rolls were, and he was like, oh yeah, three's, three's a good amount, yeah, 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 you can definitely eat three, no, you goddamn liar, you can't eat three. <laughs> there was no way they were so big so uh yeah chad's got a video of that too if you go to chad's channel and check it out he's got a video of me just like on the verge of tears like i just wanted a little bit of food that's all i wanted okay i was i was kind of putting on an act i wasn't about to cry but um yeah listen you just can, you can go away now i don't want anything to do with you um so yeah that was uh that was all of that I want your ender pearls. That fucking creeper's still back there. Did you drop any ender pearls? He's gonna drop on my head here any second. Now I feel it. Um. So yeah, PAX turned into this like this food convention, man. Um. So I didn't get to play any games at PAX until Monday, and I'm glad Monday is a part of PAX Prime now because from some for someone that has to go and do like signing and stuff like that, Monday is great because. When you go in that place on Saturday, you cannot move. There is like moving is not really something you get to do a lot of. It's it is packed, packs to pack. <laughs> um, and then when you go in there on Monday, you can breathe, man. You could dance if you wanted to. <laughs> you could dance if you wanna. <laughs> Leave your cares behind. Uh, shut up. Um, but for real, you can if you wanna. Um. <laughs> So, Monday is whenever me, uh, Captain Sparkles, Ari... Well, Ari was with us at first, and then she got pulled away to work at the Twitch booth. Um, and uh, Chad... I think... No, Co didn't join us. Yeah, it was just... That, that That was it. That was the group. We went around and played games. Um, I had been on my... It, was, it, it had been me and Wes at first. Um, and then Wes ended up going off to do... Because uh, he... Wes still has his Core Elements podcast, so he kind of wanted to go around and spread his card, too, for, for that. Um... So I had played Alien Isolation, and I tell you guys what, this made it made packs for me. This was amazing. This one it was just me and Wes. So I went up to the the guy at the Sega booth, and uh, I showed him my media badge and asked if they were doing any media um, access, because otherwise you have to stand in line for like three or four hours. And I'm not opposed to that. I don't think I'm anyone that's super special. But the thing is, and this, I've talked about this before with the media badge. The reason at first I felt like a huge dick when I used it. Um, but I realized that I don't get to have the normal PAX experience. I have to spend so much time doing signing and stuff like that. I don't get to go around and have the whole convention to stand in line. Um, so I don't. I'm no longer against me using a media badge to, to skip the line. Um, 
A lot of times you get, you actually schedule it. I didn't schedule it with Alien. I didn't know they were going to be there. If I had known that Alien and Sega were going to be there, I would have scheduled it for sure. Because, I mean, this is, I have not been this excited about a video game. I can't remember the last time I was excited, this excited about a video game. I don't have it. I don't have a, I don't have a time in my mind where I was this excited about a video game release as I am about uh, Alien Isolation. Um, so anyways, went and talked to the guy. Uh, you know, he let me ride in. It was great. Um, sat me down, and Wes is going to watch. And <laughs> there's a part like the so Alien Isolation. Let me just tell you guys, it's not a shooter. It's not a you know running gun shooter. It's it's a fear survival game. You're you're playing as um, well. I'm, I'm not gonna go into the whole detail of the game, but you're um, you're playing as Ripley's daughter here, and you you you've come back to the ship. Everyone's pretty much dead, and you're there to to research, see what the hell's going on. That type of stuff, and so you're you're there to survive. You're not there to kill the alien, which you might get to do, um, but yeah, you know, Goodland has gotten really big here, and I think Sev's a little bit upset about what's happened here with his house because Goodland's just kind of engulfed it after he's already had to move once. I feel like I'm gonna like I think I'm gonna since Goodland's named after me, I'm gonna like do something for Sev here. I'm gonna I'm gonna come and I'm gonna make an executive decision here as the Nature Preser Pre Preservation uh, Group. On behalf of Goodland, that Sev, Sev's house, like this, this Goodland needs to end right there. That's the end of Goodland, right there. This beach, because I don't really like this beach too. It's I don't think we should be taking over this beach and this huge, cool looking bay and stuff. So I think uh, I think Goodland ends here, and this is Sev's beach. It's been decreed. That's me decreeing it. Um. So yeah, it's been decreed. Can't 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 question that shit. It's been decreed, man. Um. Yeah, so played played alien. Um, there was a part where the, right after you see the alien for the first time, you're hiding under a desk. I come out and I think he's gone, and he comes around a corner. And this wasn't like a program jump scare; it was just a a jump scare that happened just randomly. And I scream like a little girl. I mean, I do that when shit scares me. I scream like I'm I'm. I know people think that like when I'm doing like a scary game, like a let's play, and I'm like ah, I'm putting on. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, mm -mm. I just scream, man. That's just what I do. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's no, it's not, it's not an act. And so when I did, the girl beside me about fell out of her chair and like Wes is back here laughing his ass off and the PR manager from Sega comes up and he's like, well, that's the first time that's happened. I'm like, well, thanks. <laughs> uh, so anyways, I ended up dying like seven times, but I beat, I beat the demo. Um, and it was amazing guys. I mean, Oh my god, it is so good. What the fuck is this? I'm not even touching that shit. I'm leaving that alone. That's your problem. Skeleton. <laughs> that cobblestone mess is not on my agenda. It's like a lava experiment went wrong or something. Um, But guys, I, I think... I think... Don't hold me to this, but I think this is going to be the first game I have to do a face cam for. Um, because there's going to be a lot of tense, tense shit. And it's going to be a slow game. It's not going to, again, it's not going to, I was, I, I spent a while talking, because, because after, after that, uh, I went and met up with Jordan and them, and we, we kept doing more shit, and, uh, holy fucking shit, dude, what the hell is all this? Um, and Jordan wanted to play it too, but he didn't have a media badge, he didn't apply for one this time, um, so I was like, well, let me go over there and talk to him, so I just spent so much time talking to him, and then while Jordan played, um, I, uh, I talked to the guy even more. And he gave me a little bit of like little insider information too, and I can't share it with you guys, but I'm really excited. I just really, I'm so excited. Um, oh god, I just have I just haven't been this excited for a game, and I don't even know when. It's just it's so, oh, it's so good, so good. Um, oh yeah, he was telling me like some of the Call of Duty Call of Duty players that have come in and played, they've had to been like, listen, guy, you can't just run and gun. This is not that type of game. Um, so yeah, they uh, they've seen that happen a lot. I guess is the, the running gun men mentality, and it's a it's a slow paced stealth game basically. But God, it was so good. The immersion, like the attention to detail. Whenever you're crouched under this um, this this table, there's gum stuck under the table. Um, just just little little things that. Oh man, I'm so excited. I've not been that excited this excited about a game in forever. Um, Oh, so on Sunday, Paul's and I got to play, I think it was Sunday, it's one of these days, Paul's and I did get to play Borderlands, uh, the pre-sequel, 
I had the footage. Um, broadband recorded the audio um, with like a mic set up on us. The audio is kind of shit, though. I've listened back to it, and Paul's and I just need to coordinate and figure out when we're going to release that. It's really the only thing that's holding us back. Um, it's kind of a. It's, I'm, I tried to edit it some, and it's kind of lame. It's not. It's not that. I'm not. Basically, I'm not happy with it, um, but I still want to release it because it is. It is. It was fun. It was early footage, stuff like that. So we're still going to release it, but just uh, be warned, guys. It's not. It's not let's play quality stuff here. It's. It's early. Early release. You, there's tons of background noise because we're inside the center of the convention hall. Um, even though they had like a little room set up for these demos, it was still loud. Um, and let me talk about that a little bit because you guys always say how nervous I am. In fact, at this point, it's almost got a little bit obnoxious because any time there's a picture of me, look how nervous he is. Look, how, look, how, look at him. Look at him. He's so nervous. It's like, that's just a fucking, I'm not, I wasn't even nervous. What are you talking about? It's just a picture of me. But like, at this point, any picture, oh, look at him. He's so nervous. Oh. Uh, apparently, you all just turned into Mickey Mouse. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I was legitimately nervous. The uh, like the the CEO of uh, 2K Australia standing behind you, um, the lead game developer standing behind you, telling you how the game works, telling you how to spec your class because they wanted to record good content here too, right? They're they're recording this shit for like press releases and stuff like that, so they want us to know how to play the game and they want us to record shit because they're recording it and they want it to be good too. Um, so he's standing behind me, he tells me I spec my character, I spec my guy and everything, and I have never sweated this hard in my life. You could have, like, given everyone in Africa something to drink just from my sweat. Like, it was pathetic. I was pouring sweat. They're like, are you hot? I'm like, no, no, not hot at all, just dying, it's fine. My body, body knows there's not much time left, and it's just getting rid of all the fluids inside of it. Um, <laughs> it was pathetic. Uh... And so halfway through the game, he's just basically trolling me, right? Because he told me about the jump pads and shit like that, and I'm getting lost. He's like, well, I bet if you understood how the jump pad worked by now, you wouldn't be lost. It was basically like having you guys there commenting over my shoulder. But not only that, you also created the game. And, like, you're representing the company, and you're stressing me the hell out. And that's what it was like. It was the worst and the greatest all at the same time. Fucking guy. Um... <laughs> So I heard, I heard that uh, that Kurt found a, a double golden record the other day. Fucking asshole. <laughs> Not really. Good, good job, Kurt. I'm proud of you. I'm jealous as hell though. First day on the server, finds cool shit. Probably found the Farlands too. Not really. Um, he will be the first though, won't he? Can you imagine some guy just like has been doing Farlands a bust? And recording it, but not airing it, and just he's gonna edit it all together and just be like, "Yeah, beat you." <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, <laughs> thought you were for me, didn't you, Kurt? Beat you. <laughs> uh, it still wouldn't be the same. Uh, <laughs> it would be kind of funny though. You got to admit. Um. <laughs> So yeah, Borderlands was a lot of fun, but God Almighty was it stressful having the guy stand behind me and uh, tell me every little thing I was doing wrong. <sighs> if it had just been some random person, it would have been okay, but man, like, I don't know, just thinking like, this is like his child almost, and I'm sitting here just pooping on it, and if I, if you pooped on my daughter, I'd punch you in the face. <laughs> I'd probably stab you, actually. Um... The things I worry about. Um, so, yeah. There's also a Telltale game coming out called Borderlands. The Tell of Borderlands. The Story of Borderlands. Hold on, I got a business card right here. Let's see what it was called. Oh, no, that's just a Telltale game's uh, business card. That doesn't tell me anything. Um, so, I had, a, I had an appointment scheduled for... Monday, last day of the convention, at 5.30, which is 30 minutes before the convention center closes to get to play the Borderlands game. And uh, I get there for my appointment, and there's this guy standing there. Okay, no, wait, hold on. Let's back up a little bit. I get there for my appointment. I do the check-in. Let him know I'm here. I'm ready to go at 5.30. He says, okay, just kind of stand over here, and we'll get you in a minute. Um, and then this, this fan walks up. Not a fan of mine, a fan of the game. And he's just kind of standing there. And then the, the PR guy um, for... Uh, Telltale, his name is uh, Job. What a name, Job. Maybe it's Job. Oh, I wonder if he's got a really shitty life. Um, 
Anyways, he comes out to talk to us. Because basically, they still had probably two hours worth of people in line. And what he wanted to tell us was that he's not going to get us in. Um, because there's just too many people in line, and there's just he would rather the fans get in than media. And uh, I'm fine with that. I don't have a problem with that at all. I think it's a good, good idea. Um, it's probably not technically what a company would want, because you're going to get way more... Like, you know, five guys will maybe get in and play where I would have, and you probably won't sell as many copies as if, as if I had video of your game and was able to release it, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but anyway, not a problem with me. He tells me that. I'm good with that. But he started talking to the other guy first, the the fan. He 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 uh, he thought he was with our group, because the guy was just, like, standing there, like, in our group. It's like, this, I don't know who this guy, who the fuck this guy is. Um... And so he's telling this guy stuff, and the guy, and then he looks down at the guy's badge. He's just a regular badge, and he's like, "Oh wait, who are you?" And the guy's like, oh, "I'm just, I want to play the game." And he's like, "Well, get in line then, you fucking guy." <laughs> and uh, so the guy just keeps standing there though. And so the, then the job comes over, or Job, whichever his name is, comes over and starts talking to, to me, Wes, and Chad about it. And uh, he's like, you know, he just tells us like, yeah, listen, I got all these people in line. I don't want to, I don't want to screw them over. I want them to be able to, to get, you know, the, the game experience. They've been staying in line for hours. I'm like, oh yeah, dude, totally understand. Sounds good. I was like, uh, he's like, you know, you're just media and all that. I was like, well, I am, I guess, but I just want to let you know that I'm a huge fan of Telltale and I've played almost every game you guys have put out and I've put a lot of them up on my channel. I talked to him about Back to the Future and the cool thing was, as I was talking about, to him about Back to the Future, the back, the song that starts at, you know, the song that plays at the very beginning of Back to the Future where like Michael J. Fox is grabbing onto cars with his, uh, with his skateboard and shit like that. It starts playing in the background. It was like, man, we're definitely in the Matrix. There's no question in this shit now. It's, there's no, my brain couldn't come up with anything else to play in the background. We're already talking about Back to the Future. So let's play the back the future theme anyways um <laughs> he's like say well let me give you guys some shirts and everything and he says he'll make sure that i get early access to telltale games from now on which i was just like i didn't even want to play your damn game i just wanted early access from now on this is great um though i have emailed him he hasn't got back to me yet so i'm kind of worried about that but let's just let's just i'm just assuming that he's probably super busy after packs and because i know most people are um because actually the guy from Sega hasn't got back to me either about uh, Alien. I, I messaged him once, he emailed me back, and I haven't found out how the embargo works with Sega yet. Um, but uh, supposedly I'm going to have early access from now on to Telltale Games, and I'm going to have early access to Alien Isolation, which is great. Uh, I mean, I won't be able to upload the content early, but I'll be able to record it early. That way I can have it up the moment that it strikes midnight, which is awesome um, for you guys and for me. And just, yeah, love it. Love it so much. It makes me so happy. Um... <laughs> but anyways, the guy gives us shirts, and Chad's like, I don't really want one, I'm not a big fan. And the guy's like, oh, too good for shirts. And then this fan guy comes up, and is like, why don't you want a shirt? And Chad didn't understand, the guy kind of mumbled and shit, and Chad's like, what? And the guy's like, why don't you want a shirt? And Chad's like, I, I didn't want a shirt. <laughs> and the guy was like, oh, no, and the guy also said large, as the guy walked away, is like, nobody asked you if you want a fucking shirt, guy? <laughs> and uh, so the guy comes back, hands out the shirts, obviously fan guy didn't get one, and then he's like, you know, I, I could have took the shirt. And Chad was like, we were having a conversation here, man. This is, you're not part of this group. What are you doing? <laughs> it's hilarious. It's like, get the fuck out, man. Have some respect for other people. Uh, so, yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty much it in regards to the Telltale thing. That was the last day. We left there. We went out to dinner. Um, that was the dinner that Amazon ended up paying for. Uh, which was amazing. It was funny because it was Labor Day, and we were trying to find somewhere to eat. And uh, the day before, Aurelian said she wanted to do uh, an omokase Japanese re a, a Japanese restaurant that offered omokase. If anyone doesn't know what that means, it's basically chef's choice. Um, generally, uh, it doesn't really it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get some special meal, um, but it's it's something that the chef is generally proud of and uh, wants to share. Um, so it sometimes it's better than I mean, normally all that stuff is available in the menu, but it's it's a good tasting menu of some of the chef's most inspired creations. Generally, is, is the best way to describe it. Um, so I I <laughs> I kind of have a list of like places in cities I'm going to visit, and so I, I knew a good Japanese place for that. And so like, okay, don't worry, I got it. She's like, all right, you take care of it, get us a reservation. It's like, all right, no problem, got it. Well, everything was closed because it was Labor Day. Everything. So, um. I just, I ended up going to Urban Spoon and just started going down the list, calling, calling every every single Japanese restaurant, and uh, at that point, it was just like, let's just find somewhere that has sushi, because we all wanted sushi, um, and 
it, after calling seven places, she started doing the same thing. And it was funny because we weren't we weren't in the same room. We were just like trading texts and stuff. And uh, <laughs> I was on hold at the place that she got us a reservation at. And then she texted me. And it was just funny because it's like, shit, I was on hold with those people. But yeah, the first seven were all closed for Labor Day. It's like, wow, you guys really missed out. Um, well, they probably didn't. Who knows? They, they, I'm sure they know their business better than we do. Uh, so, and it, it, it's just a funny thing because it just turned out to be such an amazing restaurant. We all had such a good time. Um, me and Wes and Chad shared three bottles of sake. It was, we were kind of a little bit wasted by the end. It was, it was good night. Good night. It was really good. Um, and we kind of parted ways there. It's the, the sad thing. It was kind of the end of PAX for a lot of people. Before this PAX, Paws and a couple other guys said, let's book an extra day in this convention and stay an extra day so we can just hang out as friends. So I did that. Nobody else did. <laughs> so we had our house booked for an extra day and everything. We ended up leaving the house open that, that last day. I went and stayed at Seth's house just because Seth lives there. And it's like, I'd rather do that than sit in this big-ass house by myself since everyone else that was my friend didn't do what they said they were going to do. <laughs> um, and Paws drove, too. He could have stayed. He was like, nah, I don't want to. Fucking guy. Speaking of Paws being a fucking guy, um, you know that uh, um, chili pepper vodka that he bought and they wouldn't ship to Canada like over a year ago and I was supposed to bring to Play On Con and then I, I forgot it the first time and then this last year at Play On Con. Oh, no, wait. I brought it to Play On Con and he didn't show up because he was sick. So he didn't come to that Play On Con and then I, I forgot to bring it or I couldn't find it in my house. So I didn't bring it this time to Play On Con this year. Um, even though I bought this little plastic thing for the shit to go in, and then, so I brought it with me to PAX in the fucking plastic thing, and I was scared to death, because it was packed with my clothes, and I just knew it was gonna burst, and I had to burn all those clothes, because there's no way you could ever wear them after being in the chili vodka, right? Um, so anyways, he gets the fucking shit, and then he leaves it there. Leaves it in the house. We're cleaning up the house for our last day before we leave, and here's this vodka, just sitting on the counter, and I'm like, alright Seth, this is your problem now, and Seth's like, I ain't like you, dude, I don't give a shit, I'm throwing it away. <laughs> I end up convincing Seth to take it to his house. I'm like, listen, I'll help you get it to your house. Just, just put it on the counter, and you know, just it's like it's not gonna take up prime real estate. You can just leave it there. Um, so it's at Seth's house now. It's Seth's problem. Maybe, maybe someday Paul's will get it. But fucking Paul's, man. Um, <laughs> but uh, the deal with this house. So. Before we got to this house, we we told the guy we that you know, we told him all about our, our our adventure in Boston and that we would uh, that we we would be hosting a party at our house uh, on Sunday night and all this. And he said that would be fine, no problem at all. Um, we signed all the contracts, we paid him the money, and then after all that, the week before PAX, they send us an additional contracts contracts that are to be signed by each member of the the people coming to the house. And so we read it, and it was a bunch of bullshit, man. Um, Things that are like, if if for each glass that goes unwashed, which isn't an issue, we wash our shit, we don't leave a dirty house, we don't we don't wreck the place, I mean, we're all adults, but anyways, each glass that's left unwashed, $15. So if you got two glasses, 30 bucks. Three glasses, 45 Each plate left unwashed, $25. Each pot or pan left unwashed, $35. Um, that was just one of the things. I mean, there was just so much shown the thing, like, uh, uh, I, I, I will remove my shoes the moment I enter this house. Um, I agree. I disagree. I will not be staying in this house. <laughs> like these are your options, and it's just it's just like three pages of this. So we filled it out once, saying we agree to this, and then um, he starts texting me in the middle of the convention, like, you know, why has everyone in your party filled this thing out? And Wes was the point of contact for one thing. Wes was, you know, because that's what Wes does for us. He handles this type of stuff, right? So you guys shouldn't even fucking contacting me to begin with. Um, and so I text the guy back, and I was like, you know, we did fill this out. It's been filled out once, um, and we everyone else to stay in the house understands and complies with this. And then so the next day, we're, we're walking in the rain to try to find something to eat because the place we'd gone to apparently was closed on the weekends. Um, and I get a phone call from the guy, and he's like, you know, why does everyone fill this thing out? And I was like, well, as I, as, as I explained to you, well, first he asked for Wes. I told him I wasn't Wes. I told him I was Jason. He was like, well, where's Wes? And I'm like, well, Wes is, is, is our project manager and my personal assistant, and I'm Jason. I'm the, the guy that manages the company that's ringing the house from you. Uh, you have our company card on file. Um, and I explained, you know, we're, we are Mindcrack, and that's who's ringing the house from you. And 
you know, he's kind of pitching a fit. He's like, well, the people that are staying in the house next to you, because he, he rents several houses, he was staying in the house next to you, um, they they vandalized my home, and I'm not really happy about it right now. I said, okay, um, I understand you're upset. I was really, really nice to this guy, even though I was upset. Uh, I understand you're upset, but what you're telling me isn't relevant to me in any way, and it's not really any of my concern. Um, I was like, is, and he kept going on about this, this document we need to all sign. And so I finally said, so I understand that your concern is that everyone in this house has not signed this document. And I cannot guarantee to you that everyone in the house is going to agree to some of the stuff you put in that document. And in the event they're not, then they probably won't sign it. But I'm also going to tell, I'm not going to tell them to leave the house because we're not going to vandalize your house and we're not going to leave any damages. And if we do, you do have a security deposit and you also have our corporate card on file. So this can be handled monetarily in the event that it needs to be. Um, I said, um, I'm really busy right now because I was. And... Wow, that's that was rude. Um, and so I'm gonna let you go, and I hung up. <laughs> and uh, so then, whenever it came time to, for us to leave that day, he was back. He was in. He was out of town. He told me that on the phone. He's like, "Well, I'm out of town. I can't. I don't. I'm ch not comfortable with everything right now." I was like, "Okay, well, maybe you know." <laughs> it's like so. Anyways, whenever whenever it came time for us to check out, since we were leaving a day early, and the house is gonna be uh, just left there like that, I called him, and he was back in town. So I was like, well, "Could you come over and you know check out everything? We're leaving. I also want the door, the code of the door changed, just for my own peace of mind, stuff like that." So he comes over, and we just basically told him, you know, basically what you did is bait and switch. Just in case you don't know, because we'd already signed a contract, you'd already been paid, and then you asked for an additional contract to be signed. He's like, "Well, that's not a contract. It's just a, an agreement." And I'm like, "In case you're not not aware, that that is what a contract is." Um, and I explained to him that you know we, we we did not we no longer felt comfortable holding our party in this house after after the way we were treated once we once we arrived here and that we felt like we we lost a really big business opportunity and probably money as a result um, and so we we were not satisfied with our experience in his home and that we would not be back um, and also some of the shit that he he like marked his beds weren't beds it was this pull out cot that I'm pretty sure would have murdered you if you ever tried to lay in it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the experience of our house. We didn't leave a bad review or anything like that. We told him we weren't going to. We're not going to leave a bad review or anything like that. But we just wanted to make sure he knew that we weren't satisfied. And uh, it's, it's a shame because we try to do business with the same people if we're, when we are satisfied. So he just missed out on you know future future business opportunity from us at least. And also our referral uh, for other people to stay in his, his establishment. Um, but I guess that's, that's kind of what Airbnb is like, right? I mean, you're staying in people's houses. You get what you get. Um, but... Our, 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 our previous experience have been really good, so I'm hoping that all our future ones are as well. Um, so yeah, I stayed an extra day uh, after PAX, stayed with Seth. Man, the frame rate and spawn is just fucking abysmal. Um, hung out with Seth and uh, his roommate and some friends of Seth, uh, Monica and Jason, that I've, I've hung out with them at multiple conventions, not just this one. Um, but I didn't realize that, they were, that she and um, Jason were friends with Seth before now. So that was kind of news for me. Um, earlier, there was like, okay, I, I chopped down more trees earlier because some of these are running low. We're all good now. Um, this is probably a really long episode. Uh, sorry that uh, didn't really have anything Torch Tuesday wise this week or last two weeks. Um, I know a lot of you guys are looking forward to that. I know a lot of you guys want to see a lot of Minecraft, and I'm just kind of uninspired by vanilla Minecraft. I want to play it. I want to talk to you guys, but I'm gonna do it on my own time, guys. Um, I'm going to make videos when I'm inspired to do it. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun playing Space Chickens. I'm having a lot of fun playing Sims. Sims is going to be a daily series, in fact, um, because I'm having so much fun playing. I have so much content I want to get out. Um, yeah, uh, I know you guys are enjoying those things, too, and I know you would love it if I put out tons of Minecraft, if I did a Minecraft every day. Um, and when I'm inspired, I will do things, And I'm not, but I'm not going to force content, and I hope you guys understand that. Um... I, I will make sure I do a Torch Tuesday, <laughs> even though I failed this uh, this last week. I'm kind of, part of me is sad that I don't have my new song yet from uh, Shy Guy for, oh, I don't know if I, I told you guys who was doing it yet. Okay, well, Professor Shy Guy is who's making my new intro song. And I'm kind of sad I don't have that yet because I really want to make a new intro. Well, and there's also guys going to make my intro too. But I want that made. Okay, I'm just going to stop trying to jump on that because I'm not, that, that shark is really good, by the way. Um, <laughs> ADD. Uh, I really want an intro. I don't. I don't like this black, the white text on black. I know a lot of you guys like it and think it's funny and stuff, but to me, it just feels like it's really unprofessional and looks like shit. Um, <laughs> and also, I like sit here and look at my screen for like thirty minutes trying to figure out what I'm gonna write every time, and uh, it's just it's just too much pressure. <laughs> I can't handle it. I can't keep up. I can't keep track. That chicken's pretty good too. The shark's better, I think. Well, chickens. Eh, it's hard to say. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
Ah, well, that's probably about it for today, guys. I appreciate everyone watching as always. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope you're having a good day and stuff. I don't really know where I'm going with this. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Um, this is my monster. No, this is not a monster chest. This is a monster chest. Um, and she was saying how the the hand washing area was like shared. Um, which was like really weird. Like apparently, like she could see the men peeing or whatever. It sounded like Paris all over again. Um, <laughs> and uh, so someone, I think it was, I think it might have been pause. Someone said like a glory hole, and she did not know what that was. And uh, so we proceed to explain to her what a glory hole is. <laughs> And uh, she did not believe such things even exist. And so I Google glory holes in, in uh, Seattle. And, I, and like, man, I got like a map and like directions and like distance from where we were. I got more information than I expected to get. Let's put it this way. And so I was like, no, there's 1.9 miles away from here, actually. And so she yells out, let's go to a glory hole. At the same time, the waitress walks up. And so the waitress is just like standing there like in shock kind of and Paws is like just ignore us and I was like no no you can come and then I realized what I had said and I was like I mean with us and the waitress just left she just looked at me and left that was it like too much had happened and she just walked away and uh, I felt really bad but it wasn't intentional <laughs> Uh, it was really funny though. Alright, I need to look at my guy. All right. I'm gonna need a lot more white, white stain stuff here. Oh man, I think I'd make that. Um. So yeah, we 